what your mother did. Welcome to our New Bethel AME Church, first Sunday in May of 2021, our virtual worship experience. Uh, we wanted to celebrate uh, for this quarter all of our birthdays. So you saw those names, you saw those faces, those pictures of uh, all of our good members who were born in uh, January, February, and March, and April, and we'll do that same thing at the end of the program. Welcome. Thank you for joining us today. The first thing I need to say, even before I talk about uh, punching in and clicking on like and love, and even before I mention anything uh, about uh, sending emojis, let me say today is Communion Sunday, as you see, and thanks be to God to our stewardesses, Sister uh, Linda Moore Brown, as well as Janice Britt. They have done a marvelous job in making sure our pulpit arrangements are in place, and they are beautiful this morning, so thank you so much. All right, so uh, now uh, I said that because I want you to be able to get your communion elements ahead of time uh, because after the sermon and after the invitation to discipleship, uh, we'll be participating in our communion. Now, hopefully your class leader or yourself, you already have your communion kits and you're ready to go with us. And if not, uh, now is a good time to start thinking about what you're going to use as your communion elements. We have been doing this for over a year now, so we pray that uh, you already have some elements in place. We'll consecrate them along with ours, uh, and we're going to have a good time in the name of the Lord. Amen. We have a wonderful service planned for you today. Now I can talk about, <laughs> go ahead uh, and click on uh, like or love first. That way we know that you're in worship service with us this morning, and we're in the AME Church, so you know the AME Church keeps tabs on stuff like this. So go ahead and help us out there. And then uh, we want you to go ahead and uh, send me some love emojis. If you're glad to be in the number one more time, amen. Uh, and thank you for joining our worship service. Thanks so many of you who are already online. And uh, we'll come back and acknowledge you, uh, some of you later. Now, um, I wanted to mention about our Bible study on Wednesday night. Man, if you was there last Wednesday, you know we had a good time in the name of the Lord. Uh, in fact, this is a good time to grow in the Lord and to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Uh, so we invite you to our Bible study. And then, of course, this morning, uh, most of you were on the telephone lines for the teleconference for our Bible Discovery Hour. And I just want to thank uh, Sister Joanne Kimball and Sister 
um, uh, Angela Burgess, amen, Angela Jenkins Burgess, uh, for their uh, commitment uh, to making sure that uh, they have the umbilical cord from our church to all of our members, particularly when we're talking about learning and when we're talking about growing strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Amen. All right. And then uh, two exciting things are happening this month. You know, next Sunday is Mother's Day. And boy, we got, we gonna have, it's gonna be on like neck bone next week. We gonna have some good arrangements for our mothers. Uh, our kids will be here next week. And so, you know, we're gonna have a wonderful time in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That's gonna be a whole weekend of Mother Day celebration next Saturday morning. In fact, uh, we're gonna have a conference call. We're gonna be talking about wellness, doing, particularly during and post COVID-19. Uh, and thank all of you who have already gotten your shots already. And we encourage you, if you haven't, to go ahead and get inoculated. All right. So that will be on Saturday morning. Amen. We're going to start on Saturday morning. And then we got another one, another portion of that, where we're going to have be painting. Yeah, we're going to have painting kits. Amen. Your class leader will make sure you get your painting kit so you could actually paint along with us. It's going to be a real good program on next Saturday morning. And then, of course, on Sunday morning, we'll have uh, our youth celebration. Amen. And then uh, at the end of next month, I believe that date is the 29th. It's the day right before Memorial Day. You know, it's our family and friends day. And boy, we got uh, Dr. Mark Griffin. Amen. <laughs> Dr. Mark Griffin will be uh, with us on family and friends day. And you know, it's going to be on with the eating too. I believe we're going to have some good barbecue. Yeah, some good barbecue on that day supplied by JB's uh, barbecue. All right, so stay tuned. Now we're going to start this worship service out. I believe Sister Gloria McSwain, who is a powerful prayer in her own right, she'll start us out uh, with prayer. And then that's going to be followed by our praise team. Uh, they're going to be singing, It's Good to Be Here. It's Good to Be Here. Praise God. If you know that's right, just go ahead and put, I know that's right. It's good to be here. Wonderful counselor, Prince of Peace. Father God, it is in the holy and righteous name of your own beloved Son, Jesus Christ, that we kneel before your throne of grace this morning. We bow our heads and humble hearts, thanking you, Father God, for this another day's journey. Father God, we thank you for last night's sleep, that it wasn't unto death. Thank you, Father God, for calling us forth into a new day, one in which we never seen before, Father God, and one we never see again. But, Father God, we say thank you. Father God, we thank you for your renewed mercies and your renewed grace and your everlasting love. Father God, we thank you that when you woke us up this morning, you closed us in a sound mind and a sound body and a right mind with a portion of health and strength and activities of our limbs. And, Father God, for that, we say thank you. Father God, thank you for food, shelter, and clothing this day, Father God. Father God, this is a day that you have made after you have to rejoice and be glad in it. In the almighty, holy, and righteous name of Jesus, we pray. Father God, we thank you for your Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, we acknowledge your presence and we welcome you into our homes and into ear ear our lives. Asking that you continue to take your board with us, rest you and abide in us and with us, lead, guide, and direct us, forever teaching us, Holy Spirit, and bringing all things back to remember that we need to know doing so according to the word of God. Father God, we praise your holy and righteous name and lift your name on high. For your name is the name above every name, and at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord. He's Lord of Lord and King of Kings. Father God, you the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. You are the most high God. You're the God who was, God who is, and is to come. And Father God, for that we say thank you. Father God, your mercy is from everlasting to everlasting. You're God who sit outside of time, but hold time in your hand. And Father God, we thank you when that time be with us as well as it is. We thank you when that things be as well as they are in all our lives. In the almighty, holy, and righteous name of Jesus. Father God, we thank you for being a just, loving, and merciful, forgiving God. A God who's slow to anger, but a God who plenty is in mercy. And Father God, for that we say thank you. Father God, you're a God who said hi, but you look low, you see all, you know all. You hold all in your holy and righteous hand. And Father God, for that we say thank you. Father God, there's nothing about us that's hidden from you. For we know that we all have sinned and come short of your glory and all our righteousness is as filthy rags in your sight. But Father God, you said in your word, if we confess our sin, your faith and just forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. 
righteousness. So, Father God, in Jesus' name, I ask that you please forgive us for all our manifold sins and wickedness that we most grievously committed against you and in your sight by thought, word, and deed, sins of omission and sins of commission. In the name of Jesus, even those sins who are not aware that we are committed, Father God, we ask that you have mercy in a special and mighty way. Father God, we thank you for your word, for your word is true, your word is everlasting, your word shall forever stand. Father God, we know everything ain't going down but your word. Your word shall not go out and come back void, but it shall accomplish that which you please. And Father God, for that we say thank you. Father God, we ask that you help to take your word and hide it in our heart that we may not sin against you, Father God. Father God, we ask that you help to take your word and write it upon the tablet of our heart and bind it by that thing that may be held to our whole flesh in the almighty, holy, and righteous name of Jesus. Father God, we thank you for our children this morning. Father God, we ask that you continue to bless our children in the name of Jesus. For Father God, you said in your word to suffer little children to come unto you, forbid them not, for such is the kingdom of heaven. And Father God, you said to rear these children up in the way that you were having to go, Lord God, that when, you, when they grow old, they won't depart from your will nor your way. And Father God, for this we say thank you. And Father God, Lord, I ask that you keep your hands upon our lives and ear, ear our lives, Father God. I that you continue to establish our going out and our coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. Father God, I remember those that are jail bound, prison bound, hospitalized, those in the nursing home, those in the commonwealth home, and those in their home alone. Father God, I should remember the afflicted, the sick, the shut in, the bereaved, and the birth and throughout this world, Father God. Father God, I remember all those who would do the bound to pray for, Father God, and all those that stand in need of prayer. Have mercy, we pray, Father God, in a special and mighty way. Father God, I that you help the wicked forsake their ways and the unrighteous man their thoughts and turn to you, Father God, that you will pardon their sins in the name of Jesus. And Father God, Lord, we ask that you take out the stony hearts and the hard hearts and put in the heart of flesh that we can serve and please you in the newness of life, Father God, to the honor and glory of your name. In the mighty and matchless name of Jesus, we pray, Father God, we ask that you purge us with his and make us clean, Lord God, wash us and make us to heal joy and gladness that the bone which you have broken may rejoice in the almighty holy and righteous name of jesus we pray thank you father god for being an ever present god in the time of trouble for father god your word says be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving that our request be made known to you and your peace which surpasses all understanding with god our hearts and mind through christ jesus and father god for this i say thank you father god help us to keep our hearts and minds stayed on you in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus, I pray. But well, Father God, we don't know what tomorrow we bring, but one thing we can be for sure, you change not. And Father God, for that we say thank you. Father God, I shall to continue to act that you continue to be our defense and refuge in the day of trouble. In the mighty and matchless name of Jesus, I pray. Father God, in Jesus' name, I ask that you help us to be like a tree that is planted by the rivers of water, bringing forth in good, bringing forth in good fruits in this season. And Father God, that in whatever we do, we prosper as our souls prosper. In the almighty, holy, and righteous name of Jesus. But Father God, your word say, eyes have not seen, nor have ears heard, nor has it entered into the heart of man. The good thing, Father God, that you have for us. And Father God, for that I say thank you. Father God, shall us continue to look to the hill from which you come into our help. For all our help come from you, Father God, who made heaven and earth and everything in it. Father God, for that I say thank you. But Father God, your word say the healing is the children's bread. And I that you heal us, O Lord God, and we shall be healed. Save us, O Lord, and we shall be saved. For you, Father God, are our praise. In the mighty and matchless name of Jesus. Father God, your word said your grace is sufficient, and I ask in Jesus' name that your power be made strong, that your power be made perfect, even in our weakness, Father God, in the almighty, holy, and righteous name of Jesus. Father God, continue to hold us up with your right, victorious right hand, in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus. Thank you, Father God, for your faithfulness in all our lives, in our time of grief and sorrow. Father God, we thank you for keeping your hands upon our lives and the air, air our lives. Father God, we thank you for helping us to cast our cares upon you, for you care for us, for you said in your word, your yoke is easy and your burdens are light. And Father God, for this we say thank you. Father God, in Jesus' name, thank you for your people. Thank you that your people can have access into your presence where we can find joy, strength, peace, and all that we need. Father God, in the name of Jesus. And Father God, your word said that our strength is your joy. And Father God, we just thank you for our strength being the joy of the Lord. Father God, in Jesus' name I pray, Lord God, I that you bless everywhere, Lord Jesus, Lord, save everywhere. Father God, support your Holy Spirit upon this world, that souls can be saved, hearts can be fixed, mind can be changed, people can be delivered, restored, and set free. Father God, your words are who the Son has set free is free indeed. Father God, we thank you for being a promise keeper. Father God, we thank you for being light and darkness in this dark world. Father God, in the name of Jesus. Father God, we have to continue to establish our going out and our coming in from this time forth, even forevermore. Father God, you 
all that steps in your word, Lord God. You continue to keep us safe from the virus and anything else that's not like it, Father God. In the almighty, holy, and righteous name of Jesus, Father God, you said you sent your word to heal us. But Father God, you said in your word you were wounded for our transgressions, you were bruised for our iniquities, and the chastisement of our pieces upon you, Father God, and with your strength we are healed. So, Father God, we thank you for your healing power. In the almighty, holy, and righteous name of Jesus, Father God, we thank you for your Holy Ghost power. We thank you for your saving power. In the mighty and matchless name of Jesus, we pray, Lord God. Thank you for Pastor Morris and New Belt the Church family, Father God, that you bless them on the way that you can bless them, Father God. You keep them on the way that you can keep them. These are all blessings we pray and ask in that Son, Jesus' name. Amen. shouting song right there. Amen. 
Amen. Well, first, let me thank Sister Gloria McSwain, uh, who is a powerful prayer warrior. Amen. Thank her for that wonderful prayer. And then thank our praise team. Uh, we had uh, Sister Rosalind Davis, Sister Sheila Washington, her sister, Sister Pat Beeman. Uh, we had uh, Sister Osinami. Uh, and we also had, uh, oh, Vicki Campbell, amen, she'll be back, amen, Vicki Campbell. And then, of course, our own Diana Ross, uh, Sister Sharon Holt Harris, amen. Just glad to be in the service one more time. I know that's right, boy, oh boy, oh boy. All right, I believe it's time now for our tithe and offering. And so if you get your tithe and offering, and let me just say, I want to thank our New Bethel Church family for embracing the teaching of the Word of God uh, where we can uh, say with pride, we can say with all honesty and integrity and authenticity that the majority of our members are tithing members of our church and you can see the results of that. Our ministries have been blessed. Uh, we have been blessed both uh, physically, financially, and materially. So God is blessing us in mighty and awesome and powerful ways, and it's because of our faithfulness to the word of God. Amen. So if you get your tithe and offering together now, I'm just going to hold up my phone because I have already uh, given by way of uh, Givelify. So you'll see on your screen now, you should be able to see our Givelify app here. This is where I go now to Givelify. And, and the good thing about Givelify is that, you know, once you put in your tithe and offering and you, and you parse it out into your tithe, your offering, and then uh, the other benevolent enterprises of our church, you know, you could just click that almost every week and, you, and you're there. So this is Givelify right here. And then down here, we have our cash app. Uh, cash app is the cash tag, New Bethel, AME Church Quincy, amen. And then uh, I believe my nieces and my sister, this is how they give their offering. And then, of course, we have our post office box, amen, post office box 634, uh, beautiful downtown Quincy, Florida 32351, amen, amen. And so, God, we're so thankful that we are givers and not takers, that you have blessed us, and that's what you said. It's better to give than to receive. Why? Because you've given us enough that we are able to bless somebody else. So bless somebody hearing us right now, Lord God, with the spirit of generosity, of extravagant generosity. Oh, Lord God, that your blessings might pour into their lives so great that they will not have room enough to receive. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. Let the church say amen. Amen. If you have not done already, please go back up to the top and just click on like or love button and uh, we will uh, be able to recognize your presence in the service today. Amen. Now, um, and that's what we want to do is just acknowledge some of our virtual worship service uh, guest today, and <laughs> this is so good because we were just talking about Bible study and how good and great Bible study is, and we got a lot of, most of the Bible study people I have noticed that are on uh, with our worship service today, so I do want to acknowledge uh, Patricia Bell, uh, and she's also one of our first responders, our Xavier Williams, he's there every week, I uh, see uh, Brother uh, Jackson, Raymond Jackson from over in Red Bay is with us, amen, and uh, brother and sister uh, Reginald and Lucille Campbell also from Red Bay, uh, we did receive your offerings this week, thank you for your faithfulness. Um, so we got Jody Davis, who is one of our Bible study uh, scholars. I see also uh, Linda Anita Palmer and uh, Kenneth and Robin Hammonds. Uh, thank you, Carolyn Harden uh, and Janice Britt, as well as uh, Sister uh, Linda Anita Palmer and Linda Brown. Amen. And then uh, it's good to see uh, Sister, oh, I see Joshua Shelton is with us this morning. Amen. And then... Uh, there's Mark Brown. Good morning. God bless you. Welcome to our worship service this morning. See Hazel Vincent uh, and then a Sylvester Franklin. Thank you for joining us today. 
Amen. Oh, Victoria Story. Amen. And we've been praying for Sister Victoria. Uh, she's lost her sister two weeks ago, and they had the homegoing celebration uh, just recently. Uh, thank you, Gaynell ba Bailey. Amen. Sister Mildred Wheeler. Amen. Ella G. Amen. Amen. And then uh, Sister Iris Thomas, uh, good to see you join us this morning. Hey, Rick Jefferson. Amen. Richard Jefferson, my childhood friend. Uh, he's about to get married. Amen. Hey, if so, if Rick is watching, hey, Gigi Hawthorne, we're glad to have you with us as well. Sister Muriel Swee, amen. Amen. And, uh, oh, did I mention uh, Sister Angela Burgess? Amen. Angela Jenkins Burgess, I see you, and I'm looking for your sis, your cousin. Amen. Sister Marzell, she's you along with us. Of course, uh, Wendell and Deborah Mayo and Reginald and uh, Brenda Bryant. Amen. Amen. All right, and Nequa Branch, amen, Bryson's mama, good to see you. And if you, if you are on there, I pray that your mom is on there too, Sister Mona Lisa Hart. I don't see your auntie on here yet, uh, Tarolyn uh, George Williams, but we have her lifted in prayer. And Sister Lizzie Figures, while I mention it, uh, we have you lifted up in prayer on a daily basis. I know you'll be uh, going to the doctor soon, amen. All right. Uh, thank you, and thank you to uh, our technology team. I believe we got Brother Jamal Gary and Brother uh, Jake, I'm sorry, um, Washington, Brother Washington with Caleb Washington with us this morning uh, on our technology team. Amen. All right, I believe next up, uh, we got another uh, song from our praise team. And that song is called He Rose. Now, I thought it was He Arose, but listen to this song right here. You're going to love this song, He Rose. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. I'm 
to say that verse one more time. Sad and much him. Oh, Lord. Of Calvary Hill. Oh, sang and he never. He never, he never. Sad one word. They stretch him. They stretched him my wife. Yeah. 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 So they tell me. They put a rabbit in his hand. Yeah. I told you, boy, that's a good song there. Uh, thank Brandon Green. Boy, if you got Brandon Green, Sheila Washington, Diana Ross, and uh, and uh, Vicki Camp in the same choir, man, you know you got something going on. So thank uh, our choir love, our praise team, uh, and our musical director, uh, Brother Marcus Rhodes. Hey, I got to say this. Uh, it's good to see Sherman and KD and Daniela. Amen. How y'all doing? They on vacation and they are watching our worship service today. So thank you. And then I failed to mention uh, both the Gilliards, uh, who are regulars, uh, as well as uh, Katrina Holt Chambers. Amen. And we've been lifting Sister Katrina Holt Chambers up every Wednesday night as well. So good to see you uh, join us this morning for worship. All right. Uh, let's join in the word now. The word is coming today from Proverbs chapter 21, and we'll just read two verses in your hearing, verses 21 and 22. In the meantime, let me uh, go ahead and pray. And we pray in advance, Father, for all of those who will hear your word, 
but they will ignore it. I pray that you will give them another chance despite the many chances you have given them already. I pray, oh God, for all of those who will hear your word and then apply it in their lives, that you will show them now the way of victory, that you will grant them the joy of your salvation and your peace which surpasses all understanding. Pray that you will bless them bountifully so that they may be a blessing to your people. Let them serve as shining examples of how extravagantly, ridiculously, and lavishly you bless those who trust in you. That they too will be inspired to place their faith in you. And we acknowledge at the beginning that everything we have comes from you. Bless these words from the lips of clay and this meditations of these, this heart of dust. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Uh, we are looking at uh, Proverbs chapter uh, 21, <clears throat> verses 20 and 21. And as you know, this is the uh, seventh part, and every, seven is the number of completion. So this is the seventh part in our series on faith raising. And I pray that you have... Uh, listened and adhered to the other six parts, and we're going to, uh, they say they say the best for last, so we're going to do the last part, the seventh part today, amen. Uh, <clears throat> and today I just want to title this uh, particular sermon, uh, Faith to be Financially Free, Faith to be Financially Free, amen. And some of my first responders, if you could type that in so that our audience will know what we're talking about this morning from Proverbs 21 and then verses 20 and 21. Faith to be financially free. Amen. I tried to rhyme that for y'all. All right. It says there, in the house of the wise are stores of choice food and oil, but a foolish man devours it all. He who pursues righteousness and love finds life prosperity, and honor. Amen. Amen. Faith to be financially free. Amen. Faith is first and foremost believing that God exists. Then trusting in God to be true to his word. And then relying upon God to make God's promises real in our lives. To have faith is to purposely act upon the word of God as if it was already so, before it's so, until it's so. Boy, Mark is preaching already. Yeah, Dr. Martin Lloyd Jones, he once said that faith is taking the bare word of God and acting upon it just because it is the word of God. Faith means believing and accepting what God has said simply and solely because God said it. Faith is not pretending, it is not hoping, it is not wishing that certain things will happen and certain other, certain other things will not happen. But faith believes what God has said in his word and then acts upon it. Paul, the talented tent maker from Tarsus, wrote to the Christians in Corinth in 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 5, verse 7, that we walk by faith and not by sight. Yeah, just go ahead and type in. You ain't even got to see this. <laughs> yeah, Hebrews 11 and 1 said that faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not yet seen. The point I'm driving at is that faith is absolutely critical to our advance. Williams Wadworth once uh, called faith passionate intuition. Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. once said that faith is taking the first step even when you can't see the whole staircase. And here's something you can write down. Faith is functioning as it is. Faith is function, functioning as it is before it is until it is. 
Yeah, that faith is operating as if it's already happened before it happened until it happens. Yeah, that's a good definition of faith right there. We were created to live by faith. And can we be honest? So many people live primarily on the base and on the basis of their doubts. Go and tell your neighbor who wearing the mismatched house shoes. Don't even be looking over here, neighbor. <laughs> All right? <laughs> yeah. So let me detail here the faith formula for our finances so we can be all we can be, all God created us to be, and experience the kind of financial freedom God wants us all to embrace. If you're ready for this, just type in, bring it on, pastor. Bring it on, pastor. Amen. Yeah, well, I'm going to do that. The first thing is we must prioritize our perspective. Prioritize our perspective. All right. Now, to, to have a priority means you have an inclination in a certain direction. You, you have a preference of something over another thing. That means you have an inclination, a propensity, a pension, a, a, a leaning in a certain direction. And if God is going to bless our finances, we have to be willing to accept godly priorities in our lives. And for the true child of God, God should always be the first priority. Somebody just type amen right there. Amen. Jesus says in Matthew 6, 33, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and its righteousness, not second, but first. And then it says, And all these things will be added unto you. Our first priority is God and the kingdom of God. And the kingdom of God is that area of our lives over which God is the king. All right, and if you've been to Bible study, you know our definition there. Is, the kingdom of God is anywhere where the perfect will of God is being done in our lives. And, and, and we are to acknowledge the kingship of God in our spiritual life, our family life, our personal life, our political decisions, and even in our financial choices. Go and ask your neighbor, how you do that? Yeah, just text me, how you do that, Pastor? Because I'm about to tell you. <laughs> okay, let me give you an example. Expanding on the 10, 10, 80 plan that we talked about last week. You take your paycheck, whatever you get paid, and you take the first 10% before you do anything else, and you give it as a worship offering to Almighty God. Listen to me, I'm gonna bless you today. The first 10% is our tithe to God. It is the minimum worship offering which scripture commands. Now, now, don't just take my word for it. Take God's word. Let, let, let the text do the talking. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 9, amen. My favorite chapter in the Bible, Proverbs chapter 3. In, in verse 9, in the same Bible, that told you that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but shall have everlasting life. In the same Bible where you read, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In the same Bible where you read, God is my refuge and my strength, a very present help in the time of trouble. In the same Bible, where you read, Jesus wept. In Proverbs 3 and 9, the same Bible says, honor the Lord with your wealth and with the first fruits of all your increase. Then, somebody just text me then, then your barns shall overflow with plenty and your vats will brim over with new wine. God's kingdom is our first 
priority. And it is only by honoring God and honoring the Lord from the first part of our income that God can truly take control of the other 90%. In Proverbs 16, 3, it says there, commit your way unto the Lord. And listen to this, and your plans will succeed. I don't know about you, but I want my plans to succeed. Go on, tell your neighbor, don't miss that. Don't miss that verse right there, Proverbs 16 and 3. Yeah, and the biblical truth is that we are managers. We talked about this last week. And God is the owner. And the tenth that we offer in love and in gratitude, not out of compulsion and fear, but out of love and gratitude, is recognition and acknowledgement of the ownership of Almighty God. My brothers and sisters, almost every time that the tithe is mentioned in Scripture, it is accompanied by a series of promises. Promises that say, if you will, I will. Go on, bless your neighbor this morning and say, God waiting on you, neighbor. That's right, God waiting on you. Amen. Because God says, if you will give me the tithe, the minimum worship offering, the first 10% of whatever you make, then I will richly reward you and become supernaturally involved in your personal financial picture. And if you withhold the 10% from God, come here, Malachi. Malachi calls this robbing God. A friend of mine preached a sermon called uh, Sunday Morning Stick Up. Yeah, robbing God. Yeah, if you withhold from God, then financially speaking, God says to you, you're on your own. That means that whatever comes your way, you got to handle it all by yourself. God is saying, I am not involved. Don't be talking to me about it. But here it is. If you trust God, if you give the first 10%, God promises to reward us richly and become supernaturally involved in our individual financial situation and work for our benefit. Now, I, I heard you when you thought it, so let me come back and get it. I told you I got ESPN, all right? Because some of y'all are saying, yeah, pastor, but if I'm in trouble, can I call on God and pray about that? Please hear me. Please hear what I'm about to say because this is going to bless somebody. You can never ask God to bless you so that you can continue to disobey God. Y'all missed that. Let me rewind it. That the only basis upon when you can that upon which you can ask God to bless you in disobedience is if it's your intention to now become obedient. But God will never bless you so you can continue to live like God ain't in charge. Hear, hear me today. It will be worth it if you take the first 10% and give it back to the Lord so that God can bless your 90%. So let me ask you, have you come to the place of making God your top priority. Is God and God's kingdom a priority in your life? Have you acknowledged the ownership of God in the management of your finances, your health, your wealth, and your prosperity? Have you enough faith to trust God and believe in his promises? Because Proverbs 3 and 5 just going to jaywalk from verse 9 back to 5, promises that if we trust in the Lord with all our heart and lean not unto our own understanding, somebody just type in trust God, trust God, trust God, trust God, and lean not unto our own understanding and in all our ways acknowledge God, then God shall, won't he do it, shall direct our path. All right. 
So after we prioritize our, our perspective, we must then cooperate with the creator. I like that. Cooperate with the creator. I need some first responders to help a brother out here. Cooperate with the creator. The second fact of financial freedom is to cooperate with the creator. God can't and won't enlarge your territory without your cooperation. Well, how do I cooperate, Pastor? Y'all asking some good questions this morning. Now, I told you what to do with the first 10%. Let me talk about the second one now. Take the second 10% of your income and put it into a savings or an investment account. This is what financial planners, I told you about Dave Ramsey last week, this is what financial plan planners call paying yourself. <laughs> yeah, come on, bless your neighbor and say, you work for it, go on pay yourself. Amen. Now, let me just say that this 10, 10, 80 plan, this second 10% where you pay yourself. Now, this, hear me, this is what it's not. It is not attitude money. This, ain't, this is not vacation money. This is not buy new furniture money. This is not blow it in the mall money. Uh, 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 until you get to the point where your savings have created an emergency fund. Y'all don't mind if I teach it while I preach it right here. Come on, just, just, just ask your neighbor. Just, just ask your neighbor. You know emergencies will happen, don't you? Yeah. So this second 10% is a long range fund in which you put 10% of your money on a consistent basis so that you get some money working for you. Not only do you need to work for your money, but if you want to come into the wealthy place God is trying to bring you into, you got to get some money working for you. Go on type, I like that, yeah. Get some money working for you, I like that, yeah. Now, 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 let's recap. 10% to God and 10% to an investment account. I, I checked this out on the internet, and the average income in the state of Florida is about $27,500, and I'm lowballing the numbers here. That the average income in the state of Florida, where we live, is $27,500, according to the USA Today. And, and I don't know how reliable that is, but I'll just take those numbers. But according to them, $27,500, if you are 25 years old and you have a job making $27,500 a year, just for the sake of this illustration, let, let's say that you are not going to get a raise for the next 20 years. <laughs> yeah, go on, look at your neighbor and say, he must know my boss, man. I know I ain't. Okay. But if you are making $27,500 a year from the time you're 25 to the time that you are 45, you faithfully give God 10% and you consistently pay yourself 10%, by the time you reach 45, you will have given $55,000 to the work of the Lord as worship off offerings to the Lord, which are fully tax deductible. Don't miss that. So the blessing ain't just giving it. Okay, I, I'm just trying to help somebody. You would have given $55,000 to the work of the Lord as a worship offering, and you would have paid yourself $55,000, which if you had put into an interest-bearing, simple interest-bearing account of 5%, I said I'm lowballing the numbers, your nest egg will now be $82,500. Can y'all use that kind of cash with only 10% of your income? And listen, I've used the most uh, conservative figure that's available. It is absolutely amazing and is thoroughly biblical because the Bible says in Proverbs 13 and 11, dishonest money dwindles away, but those who gather little by little, somebody type me little by little, yeah, the Bible says he who gathers little by little makes it grow. And it's a simple little plan, faithfully perform, 10% to God, 10% to pay yourself. All right, the third step 
is to commence living your new life right now. Yeah, go on preach to your neighbor. Start living your new life now, right now, yeah. Okay, so you give 10% to God, you save 10% for yourself in an interest-bearing account, and that leaves you with 80% to live on. And that means if you're gonna live on 80%, you first gotta make the decision to limit your lifestyle so that you can live on the 80% of what you earn. That 80% is for housing, entertainment, food, clothing, vacations, et cetera, and bills. And that 80% we can thoroughly enjoy because we would have honored God with the first 10% of our income and we would have paid ourselves with the second percent, 10%. And therefore, we could really enjoy the 80% because we know our financial house is now in order. If financial freedom is our goal, then we have to adopt a plan to achieve our goal. Because if we fail to plan, yeah, you know, we plan and to fail. Proverbs 13, 18 says, he who ignores discipline comes to poverty and shame. But whoever heeds, that's what this is, heeds correction will be honored. Amen. Somebody just text me, live on the 80. Live on 80. Live on 80. Yeah. Now, unlike a lot of y'all listening to me today, I don't have an abundance of positive character traits, but there are three I do have. I have optimism, self-discipline, and perseverance. I I'll tell you, I have had a budget for years that I stick to pretty closely because I have discovered I do much better with a plan. Because the only plan I had starting out was that I'm gonna get my check, I'm gonna cash it, I'm gonna put all the money in my pocket in a wad and put that wad in my pocket and if I go down to the corner store to buy a pack of bubble gum, I'm sorry, chewing gum for 35 cents, I'm gonna whip out that whole wad. <laughs> y'all ain't gonna be laughing at me. Some of y'all had that same financial plan. Yeah. You know, you wanna impress people when you pull out that knot. N nonetheless, if you remember from last week, the author of financial freedom and financial blessings is God. The authority that guarantees the financial freedom is the word of God. But you must also know there is accountability. Somebody just write in A-C-C-O-U-N-T-A-B-I-L-T-Y, accountability. I know a lot of people don't like to hear this word right here, but accountability, accountability for your action or inaction. And if you feel in cooperative, just type in accountability. Yeah, because one day, every one of us will have to give an account of what we have been given. Yeah, look at your neighbor who ain't combed their hair this morning and say, you got to an answer to God. That's right. Everybody got to an answer to God. My grandma would say, you're going to have to one day stand for the judgment bar. And, and, and in Matthew 25, Jesus tells us this incredible story about the talents. Y'all know it, so I won't take time to recapitulate it in full. But in the story, everybody was given something. One was given five, one was given two, and one was given one. And note, this is the part I love. The owner distributed the talents which were pieces of money. And one talent was worth about 30 Gs in the day's currency. So even the person who got only one talent had $30,000, chief. Yeah, the, the text says that he distributed to each one, listen to this, according to his capacity, according to his capability. Let, let me park there homiletically for a second and tell somebody that you should never get upset because somebody else has been given more than you. Do you know why? Because God is only going to give you, only going to let you hold, and only going to hold you accountable for what God gave you. You will not be held accountable for what somebody else has. 
I, I just helped about 25 of y'all here today, whether you know it or not, because if we would spend more time trying to faithfully manage what God has given us, we wouldn't have time to focus on what God has given somebody else. If we were more grateful over what we already have, we wouldn't be envious about what God has given to Tom and Dick and Harry and the Johnsons and the Jones. We would spend more time managing the resources God has put at our disposal. You wouldn't have time to sit around judging nobody else. Let me go back to the story because the time is now. The one who received five got five more. The one who got two got two more. The one who received one talent buried it in the ground. Follow me here. God expects us to take what we have been given and maximize its potential. You should never be satisfied just to maintain what God has given you. You are to take what God has given you and get more out of it. Don't ever be satisfied to get by because you'll wind up living beneath your destiny. Yeah, somebody type, I want all God got for me. Yeah, because every now and then, you have to break away from ease and comfortability and step out on faith. That's why this is called Faith Raising Series. Somebody just type in faith, F-A-I-T-H, yeah. You got to be able to say, okay, God, you brought me this far by faith. What now? Because it ain't over. How do you know it, preacher? Because Jesus ain't came back yet. And until Jesus returns, I'm determined to keep on giving my best for the best. And until Jesus come back, we got work to do. The one that had one talent. When, when the owner came back, he asked, well, what do you do with what I gave you? He said, I only had one. The owner said, I, I know it. What do you do with that one? He said, well, uh, what had happened, I, I kind of buried it in the ground. And the owner called that activity wicked. Please don't miss this. To receive something you didn't earn, didn't deserve, and do nothing with it, that's going to help somebody and it's going to mess somebody else up. Because some of us got talent that we ain't done nothing with. To receive it and not to do anything with it, the Bible calls wicked the opposite of being blessed. So if you have not been a good steward of what God has already given to you, it's sad to say, but you can expect to lose some stuff in the future. I ain't got time to break that down, but... Some of y'all been robbing God in your tithe, and what you don't know is that that's why your car broke down last week. That's why the water heater is on the blink. God got a whole lot of collection agencies, and what you haven't realized is that if you don't tithe, God will have your stuff break down, and he will have you pay good money for repairs with a repairman that does honor God with his money. The text says in Matthew 25, watch this. He that has will be given more. That, that don't seem fair, does it? But what the text is teaching us is that if we take whatever you've been given by God and you maximize it, God says, that's the kind of person I can partner with. That's the kind of person I can work with. I want to work with somebody who will do something with what I gave them. So give them some more. <laughs> oh, I wish I had somebody in this virtual service who could use a little bit more. And if it's you, just say, it's me, Lord. It's me, Lord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then the owner says, well done, my good and faithful servant. And I don't know how you feel about it, but that's what I want to hear my Savior say one day. When my Savior returns, I want to hear him say, well done, my good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things. Come on up. I'm going to make you rule over many. Well done, 
my good and faithful servant. Not well said, not well intended, well done. Is there anybody in the virtual church who would just want to hear him say, well done, well done, my good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a little. I'm going to give you a whole lot more. We thank you, and we thank God. We thank you for your time. We thank God for this opportunity to share with you. I pray this sermon was a message to you that will bless your life, bless your finances, because the way this corporate America system is designed is to keep all of us in debt. And I guarantee you, Jesus promised to come and set the captives free. Free your mind. Your money will follow. Your body will follow. Everything else will follow. God bless you real good. Amen. At this time, we're going to open up the doors to the church. This is our call to Christian discipleship. They're going to put a number on the screen for you there. And that number is 850-296-7367. Yeah. 850-296-7367. You could text JOIN and you could join our New Bethlehem Church family. Thank all of you who have joined by way of, of online too. Amen. I saw, um, I saw uh, Sister Yolanda and uh, Sister Sharnetta, Angel, and uh, Catherine the Great. Thank you for joining us early. So you can push, you can just type in to that text message box, J-O-I-N. You can join our New Bethlehem Church family. Or you could text in Jesus. If you want to know more about Jesus, type in J-E-S-U-S. And our ministry will be glad to embrace you. I love to be your pastor. We'd love to be your church family. So do that now. Do that now. 296. 7367. 296-7367 is the number that you want to type. You ought to know him. Amen. At this time, we're going to transition into our Holy Communion. I pray that you have your elements, that you will be ready to partake of the Holy Communion. Amen. God bless you real good. Holy Communion.
them now as we're about to concentrate them now. So let's have a word of prayer. I'm, I'm sorry. Let's just uh, repeat the, uh, the general confession together. Amen. Almighty God, Father, my Lord, Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men and women, we acknowledge and prevail your worship and your goodness toward us, your children. We, Lord God, who don't deserve anything, you have given everything. So we pray right now in the name of Jesus that you would forgive us of our sins, pardon us of our transgressions, and have mercy on us. Whether our sins be thy thoughts, word, and deed against your divine majesty, it provokes most definitely your wrath and indignation against us. Have mercy on us. Have mercy on us. Father God, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. On the same night that he was betrayed, Jesus took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take, eat, this is my body broken for you. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, Take and drink. This is the blood of the New Testament shed for you that you might have eternal life. The body of Jesus, I take, I eat, I am thankful in my heart. The precious blood of Jesus that was shed for me, I take, I drink. Having renewed my covenant for another 30 days, I thank God, here's our prayer. God, we thank you, we bless you, we glorify your holy name. Now, Lord God, that we are partakers of your body and your blood. Please live in us, live in us, so that we may live for you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We thank you for joining us in worship today. Remember Bible study and when? Remember next Saturday, this coming Saturday, we got the Mother's Day weekend. You can look for some advertisements on our New Bethel Way of the Church group page. Bible study on Wednesday, our Mother's Day weekend next week. Our kids will be here to bless us next Mother's Day. Amen. If our hearts are clear, praise God from whom all blessings flow. Right now.